to smash the Quran with a press. They considered that it was it, it was haram to take the Quran and smash it like that. That it should be written with a pen and that Allah created with the pen. So they were looking from a qualitative perspective, not from a quantitative perspective. And so people who are obsessed with quantity, massification, mass production, they're going to say it was a stupid idea. But for people that want quality in their cultures, it was actually a brilliant fatwa. And I'll tell you something about the Quran. In the days when people wrote them by hand, they were cherished and honored. Now you go into a masjid and they're ripped apart. They're lying upside down. You got look in your own masjid. Because I judge a masjid by the, the Qurans in the shelves. That's how I judge a masjid. The first thing I look at when I go to a masjid, I look at those Qurans and, and a lot of times I'll end up just uh, straightening them out myself. There's no adept towards the Quran. It's just shocking that Muslims have that. It's a book that people died for. You know, and, and now it's just treated like any other book, which is a result of massification, mass production. Could you please explain the sign of Yajus and Majus? Uh, are they thought to be Mongolians or Turks? And <laughs> so, that, so there was a point that some people thought they were Turks, and Turks became Muslim. Um, Yajus and well, Majus, there's, it's in the Quran, they'll come in Kulli Adam and Yansilun, they come down from every high place, and, and there's hadith traditions that indicate that they were put behind a wall by Nur Qarnayn, and Allah Ta'ala. Some of the scholars, if you look on Idrisi's map, he puts Yajuj and Majuj as, as Russia, up in northern Russia and Mongolia and those areas. Uh, Allah Ta'ala, where they are. Um, I don't know. I really don't. I've thought about it a lot and I don't know because the hadiths are, are uh, difficult to understand uh, about them. But they do come, they're one of the major signs, and they come uh, after Esai, they sin. Are we as Muslims supposed to believe Darwin's theory of evolution? If not, then how did it? You know, again, this is part of the trouble that, uh, of the crisis of knowledge in the Muslim Ummah. Uh, evolution as it's taught, I would say as it's taught, is kufa. Uh, because it teaches random mutation, it teaches that there's experiments by nature, and nature makes mistakes and keeps making mistakes until it gets it right, and then the, 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 that right thing is a, is a strong gene that's transmitted to that. If you study evolution, it's very much against the way Muslims view the world. That does not mean that we don't, I mean, microevolution, what they call microevolution, is an observable uh, fact in nature. You know, things do evolve according to their, uh, their, uh, their ecological niches. I mean, you can't you can't deny that as as a as a as a process. Um, but to say that uh, there are transitional um, species and these things, not, none of the fossil records have ever. It's all conjecture. And now they found a bipedal men that precede, uh, you know, Australopithecus or whatever. I mean, they're, it's very. They're very confused in their own uh, science. If you look at the book called Darwin's Black Box by Behe, it's a very interesting uh, critique by a biochemist uh, about it from the cell's point of view. Could you please explain the idea of Mahdi? Is it in the prophetic tradition? Some Muslims did deny the Mahdi, even Khaldun denied it, but really it's mutawatir ma'nawi. There's two types of mutawatir. Mutawatir is where there's so many transmissions that it's impossible to be alive. You have mutawatir lovely and ma'nawi. Lovely is when you have, it comes in the same sila or the same utterance every time. Like, من كذب علي متعمدا فلي يتبوى مقعده من النار. That hadith, whoever lies purposely on me, let him take his place in fire, is mutawatir. Lovely. It's been transmitted in the same way by just the countless numbers, over 50 Sahaba. And so uh, the ma'nawi means the meaning. And what they, the ulama have a qa'idah about the hadith of the Mahdi, sahihahu ghayru sarih wa sarihahu ghayru sahih. When it's clearly about the Mahdi, there's usually some criticism about the chain. But, but when, it's, uh, when it's intimated that it's the Mahdi, there's, uh, then it's sound. So for instance, What will you be like when Isa, the son of Mary, descends amongst you and your Imam is from you? And the Imam there, which is in a Sahih Hadith, is considered to be the Mahdi. So I would not disbelieve in the Mahdi. It's in the Aqidah uh, of the Muslims and, and we do believe in it. Uh, you were asked uh, which books give good references. Ali Akbar, uh, Ibn Kathir, you said something about them. However, you pointed out those 
for the Pentagon of Power is it out of control. Could you please go? And, uh, um, there are books about the Jadal written by uh, Muslims, Ali Akbar, I read his book and I think there's some really useful things in there and, but again there, there's, and there's always going to be uh, problems including with my own understanding um, and somebody can criticize my understanding so I don't really want to go into critical analysis of it. Uh, Ibn Kathir's book is very strong, uh, sound hadith. They're difficult to understand the hadith of the end of time, which is why in the hadith it says, if it gets too